And I believe that's what God wants us to do. Uh, is to dream again and if you missed it last week you can go to our church website our church app and go under the uh, sermons there and you can download that all right here's what I want us to do everybody stand back up everybody stand back up come on come on stand up stand up loosen up loosen up a little bit loosen up loosen up Um, this is such a powerful benediction from Paul a powerful Verse, And I want us to read this together. And I, I, I really hope that you'll take some time over these next few weeks and just begin to get this in your spirit and in your mind and in your thoughts and in your thinking because it's, it's power-packed. I mean, it's a loaded verse of Scripture. And we're gonna, we're gonna, this is what we're going through. And so uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about this again today. But can we read this out loud together now that you're standing on your feet and you're kind of loosened up now? And I want you to read this out loud with me today. Are you ready? Let's read it together. Come on. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Good job, but let's try it one more time, all right? Here we go. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would download revelation of who you are and the greatness of our God. Download that into our spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can be seated. Let's go back very quickly, since time is ticking. Let's let's go back and highlight a few points from this powerful verse from last week. First of all, what did we say? We said it is not about us, but it is about him. It is he who is able to do exceeding abundantly above. Remember, a double compound adverb, exceedingly abundantly above. It speaks of the ability of God to have more than enough potential power, power that is inexhaustible and limitless, and then some on top of that. Now, that's heavy right there. If you can think it, God has already exceeded it. If you can believe for it, God is already ahead of you, right? If you can ask for it, he is super abundantly beyond it. If you can dream it, he can go far beyond it. What am I trying to say, folks? We serve a God that can blow your mind. Come on. Thank you, all three of you Presbyterians. (laughs) Thirdly, God's unlimited power is unleashed or limited based on our capacity to submit to the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. That's the part that you cannot miss because the only limitation that God has is you. Mm -hmm. Listen to it again. He says, above all that we ask or think according to the power that is at work within us. So what I'm trying to say to you, as I said last week, our submission or lack of submission to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives will either unleash or limit or put a lid on the unlimited potential power of God. If we don't ask for it, If we don't dream it, if we don't believe God for it, then all of the superabundant, overflowing, immeasurable, unlimited power of God is now limited. We've put a lid on it. And God is calling us to take the lids off of our own mind and our own limitations. 
If you'll remember last week, the little funny illustration of the cat and the dog diary. How many of you remember that, right? <laughs> See, some of us, we, 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 some of us have, have been held captive by our own thoughts, the way that we think. And that limits the power of God in us and for us and through us and to us. That's the message that I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand. And God's saying, let me take those limitations off of you. It, you, you. You have to make up your mind, friend, what kind of attitude is going to dictate your life. Whoo, it's quiet. Why did it get so quiet right now? Maybe you're just listening. See, some of you are like, you're like that cat, if you remember the cat diary last week. You're like that cat, and, and you just see yourself held captive. You're, you're bound by your own thoughts, and, and you've limited the power of God through your life and what God wants to do. You, you've, you've become a prisoner of your own thought life. And then you, what, what you need to do is break out of that and, and remember the dog diary. Become like that dog and begin to dream again. And listen, you need to, to, to begin to tell yourself, wait a minute, I have the unlimited power of God on the inside of me. Romans 8 says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of me. The unlimited, unleashed, power of God gives me the ability to do the things that God has called me to do. I was built to dream again. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. There is no limit to what God can do in you, to you, for you, and through you in 2021. The only limit to God is is you. Oh, man, I hit a brick wall right there. I just feel it. You're, you're resisting that. It is Bible, folks. It's in the Scriptures. If, you, if you're not allowing the Spirit of God to, to do the work in your life, then the unlimited potential that's already there is limited. And you have to say, Father, I want you to do in me, rip out in me, take out in me, do whatever you got to do so that the power of God can flow through my life, so that the fruit of the Spirit can be manifest and evident to all. See, that's the way we've got to begin to think. God's not going to come down and just zap us and hit us over the top of the head and, and do something. We have, to, we have to walk in this humble submission to the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. Mm. Are you with me, folks? See, God, God's a dream giver. That's who he is. He's the one that plants seeds of ideas and dreams in your heart. Why does he do that? Because he's trying to accomplish his will in the earth. And guess who he uses? You. Come on. Now, he could, if he wanted to, he could do it all by himself. If he wanted to, he could send angels down to do his bidding. But he has chosen to use mankind, humankind, to do his will in the earth. And the only way he can accomplish his will in the earth is for you and I to submit to the work of the Holy Spirit of God and allow whatever he wants to do in our lives, to, his power to be manifest in our lives. The, the only way he can accomplish his will is for us to be submitted to the work of the Holy Spirit. The only limit to what God can do is you. All right. Now, let's get into some new stuff. Let's clarify a question, because this may be on your minds after last week's message. What is a God-given dream? Because here's what I need you to understand. <laughs> when, when I'm talking about dream again, and I'm talking about God wants to give you dreams, I, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, some random dream that you had when you went to bed last night. 
I'm not, I'm not, that's not the kind of dream I'm talking about. I, I'm not talking about, you know, you, you ate too much pizza before you went to bed, and oh, it was a nightmare, and uh, you know, what does this mean? And, or, or maybe you took the wrong medicine or whatever. That, that's not, that's, and, I, and I want you to hear me. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be a motivational speaker to try to get you to, to concoct some new age idea in your mind so that you can dream again. No, that's not it at all. Let me define what a God-given dream is. God-given dreams are those goals or visions that saturate your mind and ignite a fire in your soul whenever you begin to think about them. A God-given dream is that idea, that goal, that vision in your life that burns on the inside of you, and it won't leave you alone. It keeps coming back to your mind. God-given dreams. See, this is important. A dream, a real dream from God will not drive you It'll draw you. Understand that. How do I know if this is a dream from God? Because it's not driving you. The enemy's the one that drives. He pushes. He forces. But God draws you in like a, like a great big magnet. That dream just draws you. You can't get away from it. And, and, and most people, they get confused about, you know, I don't know if this is my dream or is this God's dream. Pastor, how do I know that I didn't just come up with this on my own or whether it's really from God or not, this dream that keeps coming up? That's an important question, and I want to give you a biblical answer to it today. So, Now, before I give you some things to consider, let, let me do this. The first step to reaching your dream is very important. Because if you miss this first step, you can throw all the other stuff out in away. The first step to making sure you have a God-given dream is to make sure that it flows out of a healthy relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the first step. If you miss everything else I say today, make sure you understand this. A God-given dream will always flow out of a united, healthy up-to-date relationship with Jesus. Let's look at John 15, verses 4 through 7. I want to read it to you from the NIV version of the Bible, and this is what it says. These are the words of Jesus. He says, Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. In other words, you won't be productive. You, you, you'll not be used in a productive way by God. Now listen to what he says. If you remain in me and my words remain in you. Now here's where people like to take a verse out of the Bible and misquote it. And they get all messed up. Watch what he says. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Now, let me just say, what Jesus is not saying is, your wish is my command. <laughs> you know, I'm your heavenly Santa Claus. Whatever you want, I got. I don't believe he's saying that at all. That's not what he's saying here. Neither is he saying, you know, I'm your genie in a Bible, just... Just rub your Bible and wish. I wish, O oh Lord, for a Cadillac today. Poof, there it is. No, come on. Now, you know, you may think I'm joking, but one too many people have come into my office and I've had to prop up their faith 
because they have not understood the words of Jesus and, and somehow because their prayer wasn't answered or, or their dream didn't come to pass, they thought God had abandoned them. That somehow their faith wasn't being used in the right way. Well, I don't know exactly what they believed about this, but I can tell you they misinterpreted the words of Jesus. See, listen, Jesus was saying, folks, if we will stay connected with him, if we will let his word abide in our heart and in our minds and, and let his word be the authority in our lives, then we will ask for the right things. Uh-huh. See, because our wills are united, we won't be asking for stuff that's not his will. Let me prove it to you. I didn't plan to do this. 1 John 5, 14. The, the Word of God tells us if we ask... Well, let me, let me just read it to you because I know I'll get off if I don't watch what I'm saying. Look here. 1 John 5 and, and um, verse 14. This is the confidence that we have in Him. If we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask. Now, the whatever is not whatever. The whatever is when we ask according to his will. I'm just trying to wreck some of your theology today. If we ask whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. But he's not saying just rattle off a bunch of stuff and, you know, I'm bringing you this request and this and, God, I'm wishing for this. God, God is not your heavenly Santa Claus or your heavenly jackpot where you put in, a, you know, a quarter and out comes what, you know, thousands of promises. No, 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 no. That's not at all what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, I want to do something in the earth and I want to use you to do it, and I need you to align with my will, and I need you to pray heaven to earth, and when you do, I will answer whatever it is you ask, and the dreams that you have dreamed of will be the right dreams, and God will use those dreams. Ah, gosh, I didn't say that right. But I hope you're getting this. So, Let's get back to the question. How do I know if my dream is God's dream? I'm going to hurry through these if you'll go along with me. Number one, you will know that if it is God's dream, if the dream is bigger than you. You will know that you have a God-given dream if the dream is bigger than you. So here's a good question to ask about the dream that you're having. Can I do this without God's help? There's a lot of things we can do without God's help. Hello? Yeah, there's a lot of things we can do without God's help. But if I dream a dream, and I want to know if that's from God, I need to ask myself, can I do this without God's help? The dream has to be bigger than you. You know, it's like the video we just saw. We saw these children. The, the, these children on this video, they're dreaming big dreams. You know, when we were children, we had big dreams, right? You know, I, I want to be a doctor one day, or, or I want to be a scientist, or I want to change students' lives by being a school teacher, or, or I want to be a songwriter and write hymns of praise, or maybe I want to be the president of the United States, God forbid. But when we grew older, what happened? We started putting limitations on our lives. And that's the opposite of what God wants us to do. A God-given dream is always bigger than you. You see, if you can do it by yourself, then you don't need God. And it's not a God-given, God-sized dream. Folks, God is the author of greatness, not smallness. He says, all things are possible with me. And I want to tell you, if you'll shoot for the stars, you at least 
might hit the moon. So I'm telling you, believe God for something great in your life this year. Believe that God wants to use you to do something impossible, something that people even laugh at you about when you bring it up. Mm. Ask yourself, is the dream greater than me? Does this dream seem impossible? Does it take my breath away and make me tremble and cry out for God's help? You know that it's God's dream if it's bigger than you. Secondly, you know it's a dream from God if you can't let the dream go. A God-given dream will stay with you. You see, when God really gives you a vision, when he really gives you a God-sized dream, it will never fade. It, it won't leave you. It'll, it'll just keep coming back. It'll, it'll resurface in your heart. It'll keep coming back to your mind. It'll, it'll stay on your mind. It won't leave you alone. It'll keep bugging you, and no one will be able to talk you out of your dream. Here, here, here's what's funny to me is you know, a lot of times I'll get some young people that'll come and talk to me and they'll say, hey, Pastor Dave, I want to talk to you. I feel like I had a dream about God calling me into full-time ministry. And the first thing that I'll say is, wow, that's great. That's incredible. That's awesome. God will use you. And the second thing I do is give them all the war stories. And I tell them about how you're going to be gossiped about, how people will betray you and, and backbite you and talk behind your back. I tell them all the war stories. You know why? Because if I can talk you out of your dream in one conversation, you didn't hear from God. You will not be able to let your dream go. Thirdly, you know it's a God-given dream when you would give everything for it. See, the, the God-sized dream is a, is a fire. It's in your spirit. It's a passion that you just can't get away from. It will consume your life. You'll be devoted to it. You'll give everything for it. Those of you that have children, you know what I'm talking about. I, I, would, I would lay down my life for my children I would give everything that I could to make sure that they rise to their God-given potential and to the dreams that God has put in their heart. The same is true with a God-given dream. The dream consumes you. I'm just going to tell you, it will eat you up. It'll consume you. Not in a negative way but in a way that says, God, I'll give all of my time, I'll give all of my talent, I'll give all of my money, I'll give all of my devotion to see your dream come to pass. God-given dream you would give everything for. Number four, how do my, I know my dream is from God because it will last forever. So many dreams that people have nowadays are all about themselves, selfish. Um, you know, it's all about fame and fortune and how popular I can be. And, and this is true even in the Christian world today, sad to say. You know, how popular can I be? How, how you know, what, what kind of fame will this bring me? How does this feed my ego? But none of those things... None of those things will last forever, friend. They will fade. You've got to build your dreams on things that will last forever. And there's only two things that will last forever. Do you know what they are? Number one is truth. The word of the living God. This book is the foundation that you build your dreams upon. Why? Because it's truth. Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will last forever. And that's why it's important for us to get into the Word of God and let the Word get into us. That's why I'm begging you, read through the New Testament the next 180 days. Let the Word of God speak to you. Get alone with God. Let, let the Holy Spirit begin to work in your life. Stay in tune with Him. Listen to what He's saying. Let God birth an idea or a vision or a dream into your heart. Truth. 
It's one of the two things that will last forever. Do you know what the second one is? The second one is people. People last forever. You say, well, wait a minute. I, I thought people die. They do. Sure. But they'll, they'll live for eternity somewhere. Heaven or hell. If you still believe in hell, I don't know whether you do or not. Half the Christian world today says there is no hell. Anyway, that's another whole message. God made people to last forever. Let me just say this to you. If your dream isn't about helping people, it probably isn't a God-given dream. If it's all about you, that's what it'll be about, you. The dream God puts in your life will last forever. It has eternal value. It'll be centered around truth and people, which leads me to the next point. How do I tell if this is a God-given dream? Number five, I love this part. It meets an unfulfilled need. A real dream from God will take on the idea of helping and, and pouring into a need that is around you that maybe no one else has ever met. It has as its foundation the desire to meet human needs. So ask yourself, will my dream help people? Will it improve lives? Does it fulfill a need that no one else is filling? If you can say yes to that, perhaps you have a God-sized, God-given dream. I was thinking about this this week when I was preparing this message. I went online, and I just happened to type in the top 10 inventions that people have made down through the years that were mocked by other people. <laughs> top 10 inventions that everyone said were doomed to fail. Listen, to, I won't go through all of them. Listen to what some of them were. First one. Obviously, Thomas Edison and the light bulb. Scientist Henry Morton of the Stevens Institute of Technology, here's what he predicted. The invention will be a conspicuous failure. <laughs> Look at the light bulbs. I don't know if you've ever heard this one, but George Westinghouse and his idea of alternate current, the AC, the DC, I'm not talking about the rock band. I'm talking about... It was said of Westinghouse, this is what they said, he's just fooling around. He's wasting his time. Nobody will ever use it. And guess who said it? Thomas Edison. Isn't that funny? Alexander Graham Bell and the telephone. All these big company bigwigs said they would not invest in it. Why? Because this device has obvious limitations. It's hardly more than a toy. That's what they said. Scottish inventor John Logie Baird invented the TV. In 1946, he was told it's useless because people will eventually get tired of sitting around staring at a wooden box. Come on. And you're sitting there today thinking to yourself, my dream is silly. Or maybe you've had an idea, a vision, or a dream, and somebody says to you, you're crazy. It'll never be done. Just remember the thousands of inventions that were mocked. Things like the airplanes, the automobiles, spacecraft, internet, telephones. All of these began with what? A little seed of an idea that possibly turned into a dream that one day became a reality and helped billions of people all around the world. I think of Norm and Anita Oles. I, you, you, you sit down, you sit down and you talk to, is Norm here? Where's Norm? No, not here today. Maybe he's watching. You sit around and you talk to Norm about how that happened. How that little seed of an idea that started with, hmm, maybe we could help the homeless. Maybe we could help the poor and the needy. And that that became 
an idea that turned into a dream and now that dream has become Youngstown's largest food pantry called God's Warehouse where we feed thousands of people every month. Huh? And, and let me tell you something, friend. God has and is right now exceedingly abundantly going beyond what Norm and Anita could ever have ever asked, thought, or imagined, or dreamed. And God will blow your mind if you'll get a God-given dream. <laughs> so ask yourself, does your dream meet an unfulfilled need? Last of all, a God-given dream brings glory to God. That's really what it's about. Your dream will always point people to the Savior in one way or the other. In one way or the other. It, 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 will, it will point people to the greatness of God. We, we don't serve this little small God. That's why Paul was reminding the Ephesians, listen, you are not praying to some sun god, earth god, Greek god of weird Babylonian god. You are praying to the God of the universe. That's why he says, now unto him, a capital H, him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be the glory in the church through Christ Jesus for all generations to come forever and forever amen I'm just simply trying to tell you that God wants you to dream again you're never too old to dream I'm telling you and you're never too young to have a dream. I just have a burden for the church. I have a burden for people that I preach to every Sunday that have put limitations on God. I'm just burdened for you. I, I need you. I, I, need, I want you to, to see the, the unlimited potential and power of what God can do in your life. Oh my gosh, that, that's my burden right now. It's heavy on me. You take this guy right here, this little old nightclub singer, knew nothing about God, and he changed my life. I graduated high school with a 1.8 GPA. Are you kidding me? Two weeks ago, I graduated with a master's degree at Regent with a 4.0. Take that, devil. Now listen, I don't say that about me. I'm trying to tell you. From little old Lake Milton, Ohio, God takes this nightclub singer out of the clubs, saves him, baptizes him in the Holy Ghost and fire, calls him into ministry. I'm like an idiot. I don't know what in the world I'm doing. I don't know anything about ministry. And all of a sudden, I get put in places and positions, and God's using me to turn around. Every church we've ever been in has been a major turnaround, and God's using me in that way. It's not about me. It's about him who's able to blow my mind. And he wants to do the same for you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Are you hearing me today? I feel like I'm preaching to a brick wall. Whoo! I'm trying to tell you. Take, take the prisoner captive, take, the, take the, 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 the stronghold that is off of your mind and say, God, use me and do with me whatever you want. 
Now listen, friend, I'm, I'm not saying that, that God's going to call you into full-time ministry like he did me. I'm not saying you're going to be the next Billy Graham. But how about you be the greatest mom or dad or businessman or school teacher or entrepreneur or whatever it is that God has put in the deep, deepest part of your heart and just take the limits off of what God can do for you. And then I say that not only to you individually, but I say that to us corporately as a church today. Let's take the limits off of all that we want God to do do through us in this community and let's let them use us to be a blessing to this community in this world. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the message today and before you leave, make sure you go to our YouTube page and subscribe and check out our website. New Life exists to love God and lead people to live a better story. So whether you're going to continue to listen to us online or come see us in person, we hope to see you again real soon.